Hi everyone, welcome. I'm out here in my yard, and if you're regular here on my channel, you know that I've been running a few worm systems out here in my yard. The stuff you see here on the left, this large tub of what I refer to as a uh, cocoon nursery, as well as this small bin, which is actually a bin that's got some worms in it. These all um, came out of what had been my outdoor worm bag, and what was clearly worms was taken out and started into its own little population over here. But then all the stuff that came out of the bag that went through this really fine screen was collected into this big tub here with the assumption that if all we had to do was add a little bit of extra time, what we'd get in the end was a bunch of baby worms hatching out of their cocoons. So we've been doing just that. Besides time, we've been also giving it some food and we've been giving these guys some food as well. But that's not the focus of today's visit. Today's focus is on this one over here, which is a completely different story. It's what we've um, been affectionately referring to as sort of the Phoenix or Lazarus bin, kind of returning from the dead, rising from the ashes, whatever your um, particular metaphor of choice is. But I've got a little write-up about it over here, which attempts to summarize the whole story um, with the objective being here at the end, which is I'd like to have what I refer to as the tall and narrow new number one bin, which is also the same bin that we're in right now. So rather than doing what is normally what I consider as like the population of a pre-built bin, which I record as populated in my tracking, I've got a couple occasions on where I've not populated a bin, but I've rather renewed the bedding. So it's a bin that already has worms in it. And in this case, we're gonna be pulling out the old dry castings and supplementing what's there already with some nice fresh new bedding. I guess for those of you that don't know the backstory, all these little skull and crossbones represent the die off of what I estimated to be something in excess of 7,000 red wiggler worms. Multiple bins, all having their, what I consider to be tainted castings, all dumped into a single tub and left out in my yard for quite some time. At this point, the overall duration of the time is about three and a half months that's 106 days and besides that a portion of that time has been spent doing what i refer to as horizontal migration and that's been running for almost exactly seven weeks now tomorrow it'll be seven weeks and that's just been attempting to get the population in this bin which is estimated to be extremely small over into one side of the bin and um what's left behind is some really old dry nasty castings that have got to come out and the only other thing that's happening here too, which this diagonal line represents, is that we're transitioning from outdoor system to indoor system today. Yay! So, I'm going to be grabbing this bin and heading down into my warmer room with it now, where we'll regroup and pick up where we left off. Okay, here we are. The reintroduction of this um, very, very small population of red wiggler worms. That can be tracked back to my original population of red wigglers. Although it's few, I'm going to be keeping this um, little batch of worms isolated from the rest, see if I could grow their tiny, tiny population to something um, realistic again, hopefully soon. A couple things you can see I've got down here are some of the bedding I'm going to be using, as well as some of this food and grit that we're going to set up the um, replacement bedding with. So it's really just a matter of scooping out all this old, tainted kind of bedding material, making a little bit of room and then dropping in all the nice fresh bedding, paper, cardboard, leaves, all kinds of stuff I've got on the side here. And uh, then the worms are gonna be hopefully happy with their new environment and happy enough to start breeding and expanding their numbers so we can kind of get a rebuilt population out of this batch of red wiggler worms. So let's see what we got going on in here. So I have here my trusty plastic tub that I could use to haul all these old castings over into and you can tell that it's not all castings there's a pretty good mix of um, stuff in here a lot of material that might not have ever broken down but it's all dried out pretty significantly at this point we could probably leave a little bit of it at the end it may not be necessary to uh, pull every last little bit out if we're especially if we're thinking that there might still be worms hanging out in some of the more damp stuff closer to the feeding area so we'll uh we'll see what we end up with over on this other side of the bin when we get there but 
Um, just something notable, last time we were in here and I tried to use a whole bunch of this freshly cut grass um, as bedding, people cautioned me about putting them in just as um, grass. So I did return and you can see now that's commingled with a bunch of um, leaves as well. So besides just a whole bunch of nitrogen rich grass added as bedding, I came back in here later off camera and sort of tried to create a better mix. So that, uh, I guess the, the caution was that, you know, if it's very nitrogen rich and it starts to break down rapidly, it could just end up becoming a nasty goo as opposed to um, perhaps helping it break down into a much finer material by including some bulk, some, you know, carbon material as well. Man, oh man, is this stuff dry. <laughs> You'll hear it when I start uh, dropping it into the box here. And I don't know, we'll see how many handfuls of this I end up with. It's going to be a few, because I would say it's probably more than 50% of what occupies this bin right now. I would think that maybe only about a third of the bin is, um, has, you know, has any moisture in it. The spot where the worms have been rounded up into, where the uh, fresh bedding was added. This stuff has just been sitting out here uncovered, drying for a long time. And if there's any worms hanging out in this stuff, I would be extremely surprised. But I am kind of looking through each handful as I dump it out, just to make sure I don't end up, you know, taking one of my original little worms that I worked so hard to try to, you know, round up here over here. <laughs> Wouldn't want to end up taking them back outside and missing the chance to bring them back into the, um, into the wormery. So I think we got a little bit more to go here. So as you can see, I've already got about, I don't know, almost half the container emptied out over here. Not quite half. As I kind of approach the halfway point over here, which is a little bit obscured, and maybe not quite halfway, but we're close, you can see that the material, or at least I could see already, I'll show you, you can see the material is starting to um, have a little bit of dampness and a little bit of moisture to it already. And this stuff really doesn't even seem that bad, if you think about it. Um, I, you know, I do wonder if all this stuff could have potentially just been rehabilitated if um, it had just been allowed to dry out a little bit and aerated and maybe commingled with some nice fresh bedding and kind of give the um, worms another stab at it. So I'm, uh, I guess for that reason I wasn't really going to go too crazy trying to haul a whole bunch of this out. I figured I'd take out a whole bunch of it that's very, very dry and you know, maybe just use it as a real rough sort of compost outside somewhere. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with it from the perspective of it being compost. But then we'll, um, you know, we'll leave a good portion of what's in here to be sort of reintroduced as ongoing worm habitat. Versus writing it all off as being damaged goods. And you can see I've been like just picking off some of these larger chunks of material that have been put in here more recently this top layer and things like that just so we can maybe reuse those as bedding here as well besides that I'm getting pretty close to being full on this container so if what we're really left with is let's see stuff that is a little bit dry but covered with somewhat damp grassy stuff on top and has a more damp layer beneath it is probably well on its way to being rehydrated and besides that, I guess my biggest concern is, you know, scooping out uh, a clump of, you know, damp material. I don't know, maybe if I can find an example of what I'm worried about. I'm worried about just, you know, grabbing a handful of damp material and maybe missing baby worms hanging out in it. Because maybe it is already comfortable enough for them to be in. Um, but maybe they're so small that I'm going to miss them if I just assume there's no worms there. So why don't we treat it as done? We'll take out this stuff that's been the... You know, the stuff that we sort of treated as damaged goods for the longest time, and take it out of the take it out of the uh, equation, and then um, all we really need to do is rebuild this stuff over here. I'm thinking maybe the best bet would be to leave you know as as much as, as much as I can leave what's happening over here somewhat undisturbed. As much as it would be fun to 
check out the worms. Maybe we will just disturb it a little bit <laughs> while we do that. This way we can sort of satisfy our curiosity to see how the worms are doing. And, um, and then we'll just let them continue with what they were doing. And in time they'll be able to occupy their new space. But before we probe around in there, I'm going to dump in the material I intended for this side as replacement bedding. Get it all in there. And then we could probe around in here a little bit. How does that sound? So in goes some of the bedding that I've got. Not all. But just to start. It's a whole bunch of paper towel tubes and toilet paper roll tubes. And it's a pretty good amount. I like this stuff. It's just by its nature, it creates um, you know, a really airy, cavernous um, kind of an environment. A lot of airflow, obviously. You know, we're gonna place things in here that are gonna help fill in a lot of those little holes there. So that as the um, environment be begins to collapse a little bit, it's not just going to be cardboard collapsing down on cardboard. So the next layer I'm going to drop in there is something that's um, small particle matter. It's a bunch of leaves from outdoor. And if you're a regular here, you'll be used to me using um, leaves that have kind of gone through a processing stage before being brought down here to my wormery. I've been paying a visit to my microwave oven to give all the leaves that I bring down in here sort of a treatment of, um, I don't know, kind of cleansing it of any possible creepy crawlies that might be living in this stuff, since this stuff is coming directly from outside, but guess what, today I decided I'm going to start backing away from that somewhat paranoid approach too, and to start assuming that maybe my mite outbreak wasn't um, directly contributed to me bringing leaves in from outside, but maybe to other factors that I've got other means of controlling. So I'm going to start to kind of, I guess, wean myself off of some of these overly precautious methods and um, not make any assumptions either. So that's kind of my take on that over there. As far as using leaves, at least, you know, we'll see about other things that I decide to bring in from outdoors. If it seems like there's a good chance that they're um, going to maybe bring in some sort of weird stuff. I mean, that's the whole idea of this whole thing having been outside for all this time anyway, is kind of a quarantine period with the assumption that there were probably things living in here other than worms and maybe given you know those things time to exit the bin on their own so there was a you know I guess a, an immediate assumption that there were probably fly larvae living in here so my, my only hope is that I'm not bringing in some sort of a thing that's gonna create crazy problems down here in my wormery um, bringing in any sort of weird bugs or whatever so we'll see we're gonna be keeping an eye on it for sure and, um, you know, if anything starts to emerge as unusual or possibly um, an issue, we'll, you know, we'll deal with it at that time. So I did want to um, include what I would consider to be it's almost like its first feeding. Although it's not a terribly generous or overly savory um, feeding. It is kind of that customary built-in feeding that I like to treat all my brand new bins as having when they're initially launched. So they'll get that there as what I'm technically recording as feeding number one in my tracking system. A little grit too to go along with all that fresh bedding that might um, not break down otherwise if they didn't have a supply of grit that they need to eat. And you know, like I said earlier, let's not forget, this is a very um, tiny population of worms living in here. So especially once the, they start spreading out into the entire bin, you know, we could end up checking in here and having a real hard time spotting any worms in the future so I'm thinking um, I'm gonna start covering things up here but I'd like to do so in a way that I do get a chance to see how things look in here a little bit maybe spot one or two worms that would be really nice a lot of this material I think is definitely resembles the stuff that the worms had been evacuated out of and I guess my only concern is that maybe the worms still have some sort of aversion to being in this stuff if that is the case, I'll have to sort of do a more active um, mix of the worms into their new environment if crossing this stuff for them is some sort of a, a problem. So that's another sort of consideration I'm taking into account here, not knowing what the real story is with this stuff. But our initial, you know, look through some of it didn't really produce any worms, or at least none that I, I saw. I know that there's always that possibility that you guys, from your point of view, from the camera's angle, can see stuff that I'm 
blocked from seeing. So if I've gone through this stuff rapidly and assumed that I've seen no worms, but you saw something, please let me know. I'd be curious. Because it is, like I said earlier, a very small population and every worm I spot in here is a good thing. Hey, my first worm. So it might, might be the first worm for me. I don't know. You guys might have already seen some worms hanging out already in the material. So this was already kind of over here at this edge, kind of on the perimeter. So we'll, uh, we'll put them over on the edge that I think is the most hospitable for them right now, which is this far edge, which is the edge that they've been, you know, continuously encouraged to try to make their way over into with a number of feedings applied to this. Feedings which have, you know, over time gradually gotten depleted. And I'm not sure because of maybe microorganisms living in the material. Was it actually worms eating it? I guess it's a little bit of both. I mean, we saw one worm. It would be really nice if we could kind of encounter more. Or at least a few more. Jeez Louise. This would really be a pretty incredible experiment if we did end up trying to restart this worm population with only a you know kind of an Adam and Eve environment <laughs> even more biblical references but in a way you know trying to repopulate with so few worms is not going to be easy and it might require a miracle <laughs> but I mean we've seen two so far so in theory we've got the minimum requirements for that to happen although it's certainly not consistent with what we've seen in the past which was Quite a few more worms than just that during our probing of the material. So my hope is that you guys did see some, but I don't want to prolong this video unnecessarily on the hunt for worms that are clearly hiding from me. I'd like to just kind of maintain that positive <laughs> point of view on it, assuming that that's what's going on here, and that's why we've not bumped into any. I know we haven't examined all the material. Who knows where they could be? Um... I just hope that they're comfortable and they're more plentiful than this inspection seems to suggest. I'm just going to poke around a little bit more just because it would be nice to see at least a couple more. Uh, I'm not even keeping track so I don't know I could be bumping into the same worm repeatedly here. So you would have to think that you know if you saw found two worms that look you know pretty decent happy and healthy you know there's got to be others. Okay, there's number three. So we've got three worms in the same image, in the same section of video clip. So let's just assume there's more in here. Some people have actually provided some presumptive numbers as far as how many worms we might have living in here. And they were, some of them were pretty generous. I wonder if some people are going to start taking those guesstimates back at this point based on what we've seen here. I'm, I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to be kind of optimistic and hope that we've got at least a couple dozen worms hanging out in here. Try to think of what sort of a number to scribble into my tracking spreadsheet as the estimated storing population of this bin. It's not going to be much. I just don't want it to be single digits. <laughs> All right, so you guys saw me attempt to moisten up some of that fresh bedding area that's over there. It's certainly not a lot of liquid. I'm just questioning if it's going to be maybe a little bit too dry over on that side. I wouldn't want it to suddenly start sucking all the moisture out of the section of the bin that the worms occupy. Um, but you have seen us, you know, kind of jumble things up quite a bit over here. Maybe not entirely keeping true to my original idea, which was to... Um, kind of leave their existing environment untouched. I didn't do that. I didn't even come close to doing that. I pretty much tilled it all up in an attempt to find worms. So, geez, I certainly hope we've got at least a few in here that are going to start mating and reproducing. But this to me almost seems like a bin that we could almost stick in the corner and forget about it for many, many months before we would have to check in on it. There certainly wouldn't be any exciting worm spottings if we were to check in on it anytime soon. So I think as far as next steps for this thing, I'm just going to cover it up. I'll we'll throw in some of these pieces of scrap paper that we had laying around from the old setup of the bin and from some other bins that I've recently um, taken out of service. 
so these two pieces seem like they do a pretty good job covering up whatever we'll just bring this last third piece to go over the middle hopefully that'll be um, a good initial cover I've been thinking since there is concern over losing some of the moisture out of this bin I think I'm going to cover up at least in the beginning with plastic as well so once again this bin is all about stuff that's been used before here's another piece of a uh, bubble wrap which has had a previous mission as you can see it's got some stains on it and I guess only time will tell where this is going to lead so I've certainly got my fingers crossed for this one <laughs> the only thing we've got remaining one more thing to do before we call it a day here which is something that a lot of you might already be anticipating which is the commissioning of this system as a new bin it's going to get today's date going to be traps tracked separately from anything that preceded it and in my tracking system it's going to go in with a very very small number of initial worms that start off the system I'd love to hear people's ideas as far as what you think I've got in here even if you had a previous guess I'm going to go with you know what I'm not going to re reveal my guess I'd love to hear yours though all right everyone that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well Alright everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.